But I've said before many times that some people who feel like they got the can't get rights, sometimes they can't get right because they can't get right. We're going to be dealing with this just for a few because in Romans chapter 10, and we're not going here. I'm, I just felt led at the last minute just to read the scripture. Romans 10, starting at verse number 13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14 says, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings or bring good news concerning future events future occurrences. I just want to talk just for a little bit on the right calling. The right calling. If you have your word, y'all, let's go ahead and drop down. Let's find Isaiah chapter number 42. <clears throat> Isaiah 42. And I'm persuaded to believe that every one of us who are gathered together in here right now, that we're able to be assembled here, not because we just happened to be here, but because we were called here. I was called, everybody say I was called here. I was called here. Hallelujah. Man, you know what, as a matter of fact, rather than saying the right calling, maybe I need to Say, I was called here. I was called here. I was called here. Isaiah 42. And let's go to verse number 5 through 7. Isaiah 42. In the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Minister G, why don't you go ahead and read verse number five for me, man. Hallelujah. Thus says God, the, the Lord, he who created the heavens and stretched them forth, he who spreads abroad the earth and that which comes out of it, he who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. Y'all see that? Thus says the Lord, he that created the heavens, and stretch them out, he that spread forth the earth. Hallelujah. And that which cometh out of it, he that gives breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk on it. Watch this. Bosco, can you read verse number six, man? Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, the Lord, have called thee in the righteousness, and will hold thine hand, and will keep thee, and keep thee from a covenant of, of the people, for a light of the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sister Judea, baby, can you do verse number seven? You didn't hear me, baby? It broke up. Oh, verse number, verse number seven, baby. To open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the prison, those who sit in darkness from the prison house. Hallelujah. 
Scriptures 5 through 7 says, Thus says the Lord God, he that created the heavens, stretched them out, he that spread forth the earth, and that which cometh out of it, he that gives breath unto the people upon it, and spirit to them that walk therein. I, the Lord, have called you. Everybody say, I'm, I was called here. I was called here. I have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand and will keep you and give you for a covenant of the people for a light, not darkness, not a shadow, that you will be a light to the Gentiles to open blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. First of all, y'all, it's, it's very important for us to always come back and draw the conclusion that we were called by God. It's important for us to understand that we didn't make ourselves. It's amazing to think that it's not like our spirit was in heaven that we know of and we, you know, like we pick emojis and we pick facial features. You know, you can, you know, in our little Wii game, you can actually, you know, make your skin tone and pick how big you want to be and pick your eyebrows and pick your nose. That we know of, and I'm saying that we know of because I believe that there's some mysteries that have yet to be exposed and expressed. Yeah. But that we know of, we didn't select what was selected for us. Right, right. We didn't know what color we would be. We didn't know what dispensation of time we would even be born. And I mean, have y'all, a lot of times I think about what would I have done had I been born during the time. Yeah. Where segregation was actually taking place. What would have been. Sometimes I try to picture in my mind. Slave ships. I try to picture in my mind. People that wanted to give up their lives. I, I try to picture in my mind. People that have been lynched. Exactly. I picture in my mind. Whether or not. Our lineage were actually. Ori originally from here. As natives. I. I I wonder so many different things because I believe that that the expanse of where our people have been and what we've accomplished far goes beyond slave ships. I found Olmec heads in Africa, not in Africa, in Mexico. And one of the heads, I found well, a bunch of heads, but one of them look closely resembles my face when I was like about 10 years old when I had my little dragon shirt on and I put my face next to this Olmec head and it looks like the, the shape of the nose was like mine. And, and, and I kind of wonder sometimes, you know, because when you go to Africa, you know, a lot of times they tell us even though the majority of the people are black, they still got people in Africa that you can look at their features and tell what part of Africa they're from. Yeah, yeah, right. There's some people that you can look at their hairline, just the way their hairline is, and you can tell where they're from. They got some people, I mean it's amazing because we generalize black people in such a way that we just said it, you know, we've heard it, that they all look alike, but y'all know they got so much diversity here. Yeah within us as being blacks and, 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 and before I got a chance to start meeting people on a consistent basis from various parts of Africa, there have been several occasions where people asked me if I was from Ethiopia. Well, what, why would they ask of all the countries throughout Africa, why would they ask me if I'm from Ethiopia? Perhaps is it that there's some features that I carry that makes it look like I could have some type of connection there? It's amazing to think that I still remember years ago we were, we were, we were having church on the north side 
and we were teaching and the setting was small like this. We were teaching and I remember this young girl walked off the street, came into our building and sat down while I was ministering and this feeling came over me like something was wrong and all of a sudden I began to speak in tongues. I stopped teaching and I just began to speak in tongues as the Lord gave utterance and by the time I finished Speaking in tongues when I was finally relieved to go ahead and finish doing the teaching I remember at the end of the teaching I went straight to this young lady because she never looked at my face She sat there. She looked almost like like in a daze off in a different area And when I walked up to her, I said, how are you doing? I said, who are you? What made you come? And she never even made eye contact and all she said was are you from Ethiopia? And I said, why did you say that? I said, are you from Ethiopia? She said, yes, my mother is. And I was able to recognize some of the language you were speaking in your tongue. This lady comes off the street and it looked like she was a street walker as if there must have been a pimp or something that sent her in there. But I remember it was real strange the way things happened. But I need you all to understand that you don't just show up somewhere. You were sent. You have a calling on your life. And I really need us to understand that it is so very important to recognize what is the mandate upon the call that's on your life. What is your purpose? What's your passion? What do you find yourself wanting to fight for? What is it that you find yourself being so important to you and you find that it's not so important to everybody else? Why are you like that? Could it be by design? Could it be by purpose? Could it be a strategy? There is unique purpose in each one of our lives. And there's going to be things that happen. Y'all, Sister Alice, you was praying this morning and something you said and you almost fixed it as if it was a mistake. But I caught it. And you said something like, help us to distract the enemy. And then you change and say, Lord, let us not be distracted. And I thought about it. I said, our righteousness is a distraction to the enemy. When we show up doing exactly what we're supposed to do, think about it. Are we so, whenever we think about the word distraction, we think about us being distracted. But we don't look at it like somebody could have just got robbed. Somebody could have had something unforeseen happen and you showed up as a distraction. It's amazing to think that we have a calling upon our lives. And I need every one of us to, y'all trust me, it's not as popular right now. People are playing down God. They're playing down how serious God is. They're playing down spiritual spiritual realities it's as if it's not even real but there is a remnant of people that understand that what we're going through and what we're experiencing y'all this is nothing like this is something extremely important and I need you to understand just like what the word says right here in verse number five thus says the Lord God y'all I'm talking about the one who created the heavens Hallelujah. Talking about the one who stretched them out. It's almost like he's, like you stretch out a sheet to put on a bed, you know. He says, stretch them out and he spread them forth. The earth. How would he use terms like that? And that which comes out of it, like, I stretched it out, but then I called things from it. Watch this, y'all. He that giveth breath unto the people that dwell there. And then it makes a distinction and says, and spirit to them that walk therein. 
He says, I give breath. But then he says, I give spirit. Then the scripture says, for as many as are led by the spirit. Not led by the breath. Led by the spirit. These are the sons of God. Okay, so now he introduces himself as the sovereign creator. He introduces himself as the one that, that everything derives from his creation. But then verse number six says, I, the Lord, have called you in righteousness. Hallelujah. Righteousness. Sometimes we may feel like we're not walking in righteousness. Sometimes we may feel like we're stuck in wickedness. Sometimes we feel like, how did I get here? Don't y'all know they got people who like to drink so much and like to be intoxicated so much that when they get where they got, they don't even know how they got there? Like they, like they recognize later. Yo, they got people that wake up in other people's beds. And wonder how they got there. They got people. What can y'all just imagine? They got people that find themselves in a different state. I'm not necessarily talking about a state of mind. I'm talking about a location. Like last I remember, I was at a party in Houston. How am I in Atlanta right now? They got people who are going through so many different things. And it's important, y'all, for those of us that have eyes and have ears, y'all, we got to understand that every word that's being spoken to you, every word that's spoken to you has an origin. That word is used as a distraction or that word is used for direction. That word is going to give you instruction. That word is going to give you intelligence. That word is going to give you information or that word is going to lure you. That word is going to seduce you. That word is going to trap you. And now our calling is so important that God has to, can you just imagine who are we that he thought to explain his desire for us? Y'all, we're not talking about, you know, talking to your nephew or your niece. This is a scripture, y'all, that a prophet of the Lord is saying, this is what God says. Like, like God, y'all, I'm trying not to take too long here, but like the one who created everything has certain individuals that can translate, that can interpret, that can hear what he's saying. And he tells us he made the heavens. He made everything. Then he says in verse number six, oh yeah, I'm the one that called you. I called you. I called you in righteousness. Well, God, well, what do you mean? Because I've done some things that don't seem too righteous. God says, but before you was in your mother's womb, I had already called you. And I called you in righteousness before you got. That's why y'all, when a person is born again, it's like you're able to revert back to who you, so who you were before the foundations of the world. It's like you find your, you just imagine, it's like a person living their whole life in Halloween yeah. with a mask on and you acting like somebody. Oh, they, got, they got beautiful women who were beautiful before the makeup, beautiful before the lashes and the extra hips and the extra butt and the extra breasts. They were already beautiful, but now they're putting on costumes. And now God says, I'm the one that made you the way you're trying to change right now. I, I had, God is saying, if I was able to make the heavens, you think I made a mistake when I made you? 
There is no mistake. God says, I'm the one that called. Look what he says, y'all. In righteousness. People have situations, y'all, where they were born into, into situations that we think is negative. You know, why my parents was on drugs? Why my parents are not married? And yet God can still say, but when I called you, I called you in righteousness. Hallelujah. I don't have no friends, Lord God. I don't, I've been going from pillar to post. My life has been a wreck. And God is like, but when I called you, I called you in righteousness. I don't, it looked like I ain't even going to get a chance to go to college. But when I called you, I called you in righteousness. No accidents. Everybody say no accidents. No mishaps. No mistakes. God says, I designed you. I, de I purposed you the way that you are. God says, don't fight your calling. God says, I called you to be like this. God says, I know you're trying to figure it out in your own way. But God says, when I called you, I called you in righteousness. Praise the Lord. He says, and look what he says, y'all. Evidently, the calling was not enough. <laughs> it's amazing to know that God can call us, but it's still not enough. Just to be called is good, it's great, but it's not enough. The calling is so important. And look what he says right after that. He says, after I called you in righteousness, he says, I found it important to have to hold your hand. Some things, yo, we need somebody to hold us and to help us. We need somebody. Y'all, sometimes we get so captivated by what we see. Why was I born in this situation? And we don't even know how to see the glory of God. So, so until we come to a place where we can interpret what he's saying to us, he said, give me your hand. It's almost like a mother taking her child. You know, you see mothers now with leashes on their children. <laughs> you know, you're small and you don't want me to hold your hand. Give me this little rub, this little plastic thing right there. And now you gotta, you gotta stay with me because now a, a good, a good parent don't wait for the child to offer their hand. A good parent say, you know, because you know how we are as children. We don't want you to hold our hand. You know, they got people that see me. Let me go. Let me look like I know where I'm going. Isn't that how we do to God? But God don't say, I'm going to ask, can I hold your hand? He don't say that. He says, I will hold your hand. And look what he says. And I'm going to keep you. Boy, this is so powerful to me. I'm going to keep you. Keep you means I'm not going to lose you. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. I'm not going to lose you. Everybody say, I'm not lost. God says, the only reason why you're not lost, he said, because I kept you. I kept you with me. How many times you try to do your own thing and God says, oh no, I chose to keep you. Yeah. Oh no, you, you're not one of the lost ones. You're not, you don't even have the attribute as if you're supposed to look like a lost one. God said, I got your hand. Sometimes, you know, I want to say if it's in the 21st century, it's almost like saying I got you by your armpit. Like I'm holding you at your shoulder. Like, like get over here. Sometimes it's a y'all. It's a blessing when there's certain things that you can't get away with. Certain things you want to get away. You try so hard to try to blend and become a different identity. You want to put on something that don't fit you. And God says, "But I called you. I created you the way that you are." Praise the Lord. He said, "I'm gonna hold you and I'm gonna keep you." But look at the reason why he's keeping us, y'all. And I'm just about done. He says, I'm keeping you so I can give you as a gift. <laughs> Boy, that's for everybody say I'm a gift. Y'all, sometimes we, some, anybody ever, sometimes you, you find yourself feeling like trash, you know. Like, man, I ain't got no haircut. I'm trash right now. I don't, I don't, I don't have the clothes I want to wear, man. I, Man, I'm walking bare. I'm, I'm trash. I'm just, I just don't feel good. But God says, no, you're not a trash. You're not trash. 
God says you're a gift. God says you're a gift. And God says, I got some people I made you for. <laughs> I got an atmosphere that I'm sending you and nobody else. Y'all think about it. We, many of us are just like keys. You're not going to fit in every lock. You're not going to fit with every group. But God says, I'm going to make you to fit where you're supposed to be. But he says, but even when you fit there, I need to hold your hand. Because if you don't see yourself as one that's sent as a gift, you will allow yourself to become conformed to the very thing you were sent to change. Look what it says, I'm going to hold your hand and I'm going to give you as a gift, as a covenant of the people for a light to those that walk in darkness. You want to know why some things in your life is not going right? Let's just begin to say, God, help me to see the way you want me to see. Lord, help me. Help me to realize that if I'm sent to Gentiles, what is a Gentile, y'all? Y'all, let, let's have a little bit of a dialogue right now, y'all. Let's just, you can unmute if you can think about it. What do you think when you hear the word Gentile? What does the word Gentile mean to you? Anybody? Praise the Lord. One that's not a Jew. One that's not a Jew. Anybody else? What is a Gentile? Everyone that's not a Jew. Everybody that's not a Jew. But what, but what does that mean when you say they're not a Jew? Hallelujah. Anybody? Nation. Listen up, y'all. Gentiles is everyone that's non Hebrew or non Jewish, right? But when we think about it like this, these are the select people that God chose for himself personally. The primary people that God chose for himself personally. He mm -hmm. says, I'm going to use you as a gift to those heathen people. Those people that, that don't know my way. They don't know how to worship me. They don't know how to live before me. God says, so I need reminders. I need patterns. I need examples in the land that will remind the Gentiles of my ways. Think about it. God really wants you to show up in a classroom to manifest the glory of God. God wants you to show up on your job to demonstrate what it means to walk in righteousness. God wants you to affiliate and make friends in a way that shows what's acceptable to the will of God. He says, I need you to be a light. Yo, when you go around people, you can tell, is the light on? Or is there no light? God says, be a light. Be a light. Don't be confused. Don't dim. Shine. Don't get dark. Be bright. If, if they can't see their way, and if I sent you as a guide, and if they fail or if they get lost, you're partially responsible now. Because I sent you to be a light. Yo, you didn't just happen to be there. You were called there. Nobody else could fit the way you did because you're like a key. You had to be the one to go. Stop looking at the, the affiliation with everybody else who everybody else can hook up to and wonder why you don't fit with them. Because evidently, it's a different lock that you're supposed to be in. 
Evidently, you designed in a different way. He says, you are light to the Gentiles. Why? Verse number seven. Y'all, this, this is, everybody say, this is my purpose. This is my purpose. Why is this, y'all? Verse number seven. To open blind eyes. Let, let, me, let me read this in, in, in 21st century um, common terms. You're going to get on some people's nerves. Some people ain't gonna like you. Some people are gonna be disturbed by you. Some people will appreciate you. Some people will feel extremely enlightened when you come around. See, it ain't all bad. They got some people that's looking for, some people are saying, man, I'm glad you showed up. You helped me. You made my life better. God says it's because there was a problem. There was a lock that couldn't get open. And I sent you. I said, I called you to open blind eyes. Wait a minute. So not only to open blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison. Can y'all, let's, let's, let's talk on this a little bit, y'all. Give me some examples because... Some of us have never been to a physical prison. What, what do y'all think he's talking about right here? Bondage. God says, do you recognize anybody that's in prison? Anybody in bondage? And God says, I've sent you not to play around and make that your habitation. I sent you as a key to unlock the prison doors. And it's, believe it or not, it's not even good enough to unlock the prison doors because some people need you to grab them by the hand and lead them out of the prison. Lead them out of the lifestyle. Lead them out of the confusion. Y'all, this is our purpose. To bring out prisoners from the prison. And look what it says, y'all. And them, what does y'all translation say? Them that do what? They sit. What, what you doing sitting there? Sitting in darkness. They got people that get so depressed and so messed up, they don't even realize all you got to do is get up and get out of there. But instead of getting out, they sit there, confused, and you sit there, messed up in your mind, no peace. Why would you stay there? Who are you with? Why are you making these decisions? He says, I'm sending you to open blind eyes. To, to, to go to those people who are prisoners, go to the prison. That's why, y'all, we can't compromise. Because you got to understand, sometimes you're going to be sent into a prison. Yo, it gets rowdy in the prison. They got people with lifestyles and their mindset is adapted to prison life. You think it's easy to go into a prison mindset as a believer? Believe it or not, y'all, they got many men and God powerful who are in the prison house right now. But they were a key. I have a cousin, y'all, that did 20 years. And he told me, he said, cuz, man, there was somebody, some pastors I met up in there. He said, man, I had somebody that laid their hands on me and I felt the presence of God go through my body. He said, in a way that I had never felt in a church house. But I experienced it in prison. They got some people who are on assignment to be where they are. And they call to walk in such a level of peace. That they're not trying to leave before time. Like Lord, how long you want me here? How long you want me on this job? I know I can get a better job right now. But Lord, 
help me to be faithful where I am. He says, those who sit in darkness, but then he says, get them out of the prison house. So evidently the ones who are sitting in darkness, some of them don't even realize they're in prison. They're sitting in darkness. They don't realize. Some of them don't even know that they can get out. Some feel like they can't get out. It's a prison. So y'all, I'm just about done. We're going to close out right here. Turn real quick to this one scripture, 1 Corinthians 1 and 26. And these, these, I'm just giving you a scripture just for your notes. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 1. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Muamba, can you read that verse number 26, man? First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 26. Yes, sir. <laughs> Brothers, think of what you were when you were called. Not many of you were wise by human standard. Not many were influential. Not many were of noble birth. Do verse 27 too, man. But God chose the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. God chose the weak things of the world to shame the strong. Hallelujah. So y'all listen to this. This is a blessing because I like how the Apostle Paul says, in my translation, he says, for you see your calling. Man, you talking about powerful? Just to talk to people that can actually see their calling. Can you see your calling? Like we just got through talking about everything that you call to do. Do you see it? Do you recognize it? Has it, do you have peace with it? He says, for you see your calling, brethren, are there not many wise men after the flesh? So that means that you might have been considered not all that after the flesh. But he didn't say what you are in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Last verse, y'all. Second Peter real quick. One and ten. Put this in your notes. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord God. Second Peter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, do 9 and 10. 9 and 10. Let me see. Um, Sister Patrice, are you in a position? Patrice, can you read this scripture? Hallelujah. 2 Peter 9 and 10. Uh-uh. 2 Peter 1 and verse 9 and 10. Yes. If Oh, chapter, oh, Second Peter. Yeah, Second Peter chapter Wait, one, Second verse. Peter nine and ten. Uh, uh Second Peter chapter one, and verse nine and ten. Oh, chapter one. I'm sorry. Okay. Glory to your name, Lord Jesus. Yes, I don't know. I'm on my Bible app. It's loading. Oh my it's God. taking a while. Can you call up someone else? Yeah. Sister Kenya or Amani, are you available? Oh Go ahead, Amani. Read verse number nine, man. But whoever does not have them in nurse, sighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Do ten also. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and oh, you will never stumble. Yeah, that's it. He said, but y'all, let's say, so think about it, y'all. When we talking about the prisoners, those people who are blind, those people that's in, in bondage, look what it says. But he that lacks these things is blind. 
You see why it's so important for us to be alive? They're blind. And they can't see afar off. They got some people that only see immediately in front of them. They get caught up in quick relationships that's long-term heartaches. They can't see far off. You can't see down the line. You see what you want right now. He says, and had forgotten that he was purged from this type of stuff. He says, wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and your election sure. Y'all pay attention. Is this what you know you're supposed to be doing? It's going to take discipline. It's going to take hard work. It's going to take focus. It's going to take determination for you to constantly revisit over and over again. Then it's going to take companionship and camaraderie that's encouraging you to do the same thing. You can't do it by yourself. God says, I'm going to take you by your hand and I'm going to walk with you through this. He said, make your election sure. He says, and guess what? If you start doing this, he says, falling, stumbling, falling away from the faith. He says, not you. Not you. Not you because you know what's important. You know what's necessary. Hallelujah. You know it's vital. You know it's vital. So I just want to encourage every one of you right now. You have a specific calling. You're the key to a particular lock. If you fit there, do what you assigned to do. Don't forget your purpose. How is it that I get along with people so uns unsaved, so good? Because you are key. Yeah. But that's not for you to be conformed to be like them. Be not conformed to this world. But be transformed. Do y'all realize how accountable we are to those people to whom we've been sent? God says, I designed you in such a way that they're going to invite you into their house. They're going to invite you into their life. Say, but I sent you as a light. Hallelujah. Don't forget it. Don't forget it. So, Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We honor you for your word. We thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for your strategy, Lord God. Father, help us to know, Lord 